Well, two different things. All the declassification laws, all the national security information laws, all the Presidential Records Act laws clarify is that all these laws are about everybody except the president. Because constitutionally, they cannot limit the president. This is saying that he stopped Trump from doing what Trump stopped Milley from doing. And so all Trump did says, I got documents. And he's using language so that they sound authoritative and impressive and all the rest. It has no legal bearing in a criminal context whatsoever. Because again, these are his documents. He can do what he wants. When he left with them, they became his how do we know that? Because a federal district court judge in the District of Columbia already established it a decade ago. Bill Clinton took tapes that had national security information on those tapes, had classified information on those tapes. He stuck them in his sock drawer. He refused to give them to the government, refused to give them to the archives, refused to consider them government records. He had made no formal designation of them is declassified he hadn't gone through the imagine these people are citing an executive order this is the this comes from the president the idea the president can somehow bind the president doesn't even make any sense that binds everybody but the president because constitutionally that's the way it has to be and so here but it, we can look at clinton clinton didn't declassify anything in there did clinton didn't go through any formalized process did clinton didn't formally declare them his personal records clinton just took them just like trump did and what did the federal district court say? It said under the say under Article Two, under the Presidential Records Act, that is a decision solely for the president to make. The mere act of taking them made them his personal records, made them not public records, not national security records, not classified records, not records that belonged in the archives, uh, and records that no one could compel him to even turn over. And so now Trump has clearly got a lot of bad legal advice throughout this entire process because they should have fought this from day one. These are Trump's records, but they're indicting Trump over him keeping his own records, which are constitutionally his own records, statutorily his own records, and under existing le the only legal precedent that exists, the Clinton case, his own records. Now, it radically declassified by the fact that he took them. They're his personal records. And that's, that's I mean, the, and the idea that classification can exist independent of the president who who the records were created during his administration or while he was president, he had access to them, would mean that you have these super secret documents that the president has to formally go through a specialized process to, to, to make public or they're forever secret. It empowers the deep state over the president. That cannot happen. These are things he can do whatever he wants. Anytime well, he wants. Second court documents. He didn't because do it Because that allowed other people to disclose those documents other than him. In other words, be, the, all declassification does is allows people other than the president okay. to provide information. Because it's important to remember, all this is for the benefit of the president. So that, that it's for the benefit of the president. So he can do whatever he wants with it. He, you could think of it as he can unilaterally waive it anytime he wants. Those classification provisions are only meant so that other people can't disclose the documents without his authority or approval, not whether he can disclose those documents. And then use that as blackmail material, say, I'll make it public unless you do my bidding for me. Oh, uh, and, and once he's no that, LBJ actually explicitly did that. Uh, LBJ did that to, to members of Congress and did it to the Nixon administration. Said, if you blame me for certain things, I'll do boop, 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 boop. Uh, so the, uh, that, that's, that's the consequent, because we're, we're taking trade-offs. Do we give the power to the elected exec president or do we give the power to some nameless bureaucracy? And, we're, and what consequences flow from that? He gets, once a man is elected president, man or woman is elected president, they get access to all of our secrets and they get to do whatever they want. And we take that trade off because we want an elected official with access to our secrets. We don't want a secret government that's independent of any elected official. We will take the trade offs that maybe this elected president will go and do something terrible with these secrets uh, over at a secret branch of government that is allowed to keep secrets from the elected people, elected representatives of the American people. There are a bunch of other constitutional defenses he has. Uh, uh, first up will be the First Amendment, selective prosecution, or first up in order of the Constitution after Article 2. I, I should say, actually, before that would be the impeachment clause, which I've previously articulated the argument for as concerns New York. Uh, it would apply it maybe even more strongly in the federal context. And again, my argument is rather simple. The, we have a, a provision that says when an ex-president can be indicted. It's right in the Constitution. 
It says after impeachment by the House and after conviction in the Senate, then and after removal. So he's the next president by definition. Then he can be indicted. Uh, my view is that has to be read in exclusively that process or otherwise it makes no sense that it's even there. Mm -hmm. Why is that even there if, if it doesn't apply to ex-presidents? Not only that, we know impeachment can be done of an ex-president because they did it to Trump. They did his conviction trial hearing after he was no longer president of the United States. So uh, my to say, so the first argument would be Article 2, Presidential Records Act, Trump's the National Security, Espionage Act laws, and should all be uh, the entire indictment dismissed on those grounds. Second, the indictment should be dismissed because it, he has not been impeached or convicted on these charges. He's never been convicted as all, at all. As you mentioned, he's been acquitted twice, and some of these charges were implicitly referenced in that to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, on those grounds, there should be dismissal to enforce the impeachment clause. Third grounds for dismissal is the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, but it will have a bifurcated basis. One is selective prosecution under the First Amendment. You have a right of free speech, a right of free assembly, a right of free expression, a right of, of, uh, of freedom of press, a right to petition your government. All of these rights are, have been interpreted to mean right to access the ballot, right to circulate petitions to get on the ballot. By definition, it should mean a right to run for office, president, and it has been interpreted that way in a wide range of contexts. And so consequently, my view is that if we should read the First Amendment to prohibit one administration from indicting their leading opponent in the next administration. So now this has one danger. The one danger is that by declaring yourself for president, while you're president, no criminal indictment could go forward. No criminal case could go forward. But that is a very small downside risk. The number of people who have qualified to get on enough ballots uh, to be elected president is less than 100 over American history well, and, over hundreds of years. It's all Your selective prosecution part is what everybody has mentioned, which is the discriminatory, disparate, two-tiered system of justice. The First Amendment prohibits that. First Amendment uh, prohibits something called selective prosecution. You can't indict someone in order to suppress or punish their speech, their activity, their expression, their association, their being a candidate for office, etc. Clearly, that is the case here because we go all the way back well, as I pointed out, if, if if a president having personal custody and possession of information that concerns national security is a crime, and indict, by the way, that is what this indictment alleges. Indict all of them. Clinton, All of them Bush. would have to be. Every lie, uh, Jimmy Carter would have to be indicted. Everybody would, because every single one of them has personal cust custody and possession right now of information that concerns national security. That's how absurd Jack Smith, who has a long history of pursuing ridiculous legal theories, like he did against John Edwards, like he did against the former governor of Virginia, like he's done in other cases, where he's been repeatedly rejected by judges and juries alike for the absurdity of his legal theories. Here he is proposing that the national security laws trump the presidential record laws, that the Congress has constitutional authority to criminally punish the executive branch for doing the executive branch's constitutional duties. Two utterly absurd propositions that he has made without any precedent whatsoever. The only precedent directly refuting and rebutting him, even from a liberal judge, Amy Berman Jackson of the District of Columbia. But then we have the practical precedent and the custom and tradition, which is that presidents all have national security information in every one of their presidential libraries as we speak. Not only that, they have it in their personal custody, like Clinton did. Clinton was recording conversations with an author where he was discussing national security information and classified information on those tapes. That's why he kept the tapes. He kept them in his sock drawer, his sock drawer. Uh, uh, the, I mean, in the case of Barack Obama, he had a bunch of national security information in an abandoned storage locker that was all that anybody could have accessed if they hadn't, you know, knew where it was probably more than a few did. Uh, the, and he refused, by the way, to return it to National Archives for almost a year. The, I mean, Biden had stuff in his, you know, uh, in his garage next to his Corvette. So abandoned storage lockers, your sock drawer and your Corvette in your car garage. And Trump has it in a secured location in one of the most secured places on the planet after he had become president, which is Mar-a-Lago. And he's the one you're going to indict. And that's not selective prosecution. Uh, if that isn't selective prosecution, then there is no selective prosecution limitation anymore. So that is additional First Amendment grounds to dismiss the indictment. So you've already got four different constitutional grounds, but it doesn't stop there because then you got the ludicrous nature of the search warrant. 
you've got the search warrant was too broad. The search warrant made false statements of fact. And then you've got, and so you have procurement of the search warrant in violation of probable cause because of material misrepresentations in it. Then you have the execution of the search warrant where they failed to properly present it in a timely manner, where they seized information that by their own admission was outside the scope of permissible scope of the search warrant. And they seized it anyway. And they haven't even identified what classified information was actually relevant to the indictment because there's no classification based indictment uh, allegation present in the case, as people pointed out. So you have problems in the execution of the search warrant. So you have this big poison tree at the center of their entire case that poisoned the rest of it. That's independent grounds for dismissal under the Fourth Amendment. Then you have a unique Fourth, Fifth and Sixth Amendment grounds to dismiss, because, as you know, there's a bunch of their entire cases based on attorney client communications. This is a deliberate breach of attorney client privilege. How do they get it? I, they I, got like, it by a corrupt judge in D.C. who wasn't even supposed to be presiding over the case, given that it was in Florida. No, like, 